Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. All right, welcome back. We're in Matthew chapter 20. What did, when Jesus said, many who are last shall be first and the first last, when he said that to the 12, were they at that present time in the first category or were they in the last category? You know, what's the answer to that question? Well, I'll tell you my opinion. You can judge whether you agree with me. There's no doubt that Jesus you know, has already told them that in the end, you're gonna be in the first, right? He just told them, you'll be, you'll be on 12 thrones, for goodness sakes, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And so you're gonna be highly exalted. You're gonna be way above, you'll be a ruler ruling over entire tribes. Hundreds of thousands of people will be under your individual rulerships, as it were. So there's no doubt that at the end, they would be in the category of the first. What category were they in when Jesus said those words? I submit to you, they were in the category of the last. They had given up everything. That's what we were just talking about. We left our livelihoods, our families, our homes. We've been following around like vagabonds, you know, and so forth, sleeping on the ground. People hate us. The religious leaders want to kill us. Uh, you, you know, again, a lot of advantages to hang out with Jesus, but they paid a huge price. And remember, Paul, one time, one of his epistles was lamenting. God has, you know, uh, demonstrated us apostles as being last of all and being the dregs. And he just went on and on about the hardships that he suffered and not trying to, you know, solicit sympathy, but just trying to help his readers understand his lot in life, uh, what he, the price he had to pay for his calling, all the things he had to suffer for Jesus' sake. And was, were, was Paul and were these guys honored and were they looked up to and respected and revered? Do they have great positions? You know, no, they were at the bottom of the totem pole. People were looking down at them. Just like Jesus, of course, at that time as well, from so many uh, quarters. And so this was an encouragement to them. You guys are paying a huge price. He's just been encouraging them, hasn't he? In, in the end of chapter 19, you know, here's what you're going to get. And all those who leave houses and farms shall receive many times as much and, and so on. And so this is an encouragement to them. You guys, now you're among the, 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 the last, but you're going to be among the first. And, and it, it's working in your favor, but that same principle works the other way around. Around, many who are now first are going to be last then, okay? And who are those? Well, those are the people who have decided uh, that paying the price to follow Jesus is too much. Like who? Like the rich young ruler who was now way off in the distance as Jesus was finishing this uh, amazing parable right? Many who are first now. He's very wealthy. He owns lots of property. He's got prestige and honor, people looking up to him. He's the guy that can go out and all the laborers, you know, uh, are, are waiting, just hoping that he'll hire them for the day, you know, because he's the, he's the big rich guy. It's very possible that even this parable that, you know, they all identified, that's the rich guy. The rich guy is the landowner. The, the, the rich young ruler owned lots of land. That's what the gospel says, okay? Okay? So Jesus is still making a commentary on the rich young ruler in this. It's going to be reversed. You poor people that seem like you're the beggars now and, and, and got, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the bad roll of the dice in life, it, it's going to be turned around for you. And those guys that looks like everything, you know, uh, they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth and who are unwilling to pay any price and who want to cling to their power and riches and prestige, you know, and not identify with Jesus Christ or care for the poor, or make any sacrifices, those people are going to be last one day. And, and, and certainly that's true in the larger scheme of salvation, is it not? Sure, sure it is. Uh, you know, all of us who are followers of Christ and paying any degree of sacrifice, um, you know, we, we're... We're, we're like that guy who discovered the treasure in the field, you know. Uh, people are mocking us and making fun of us now because of what we're doing to follow Christ, but we know that we've discovered something that's of, of incredible value, and one day everyone's going to know we made the right decision, 
Okay, but those who have refused to believe in Jesus, not followed him, well, they'll be last. Wow, that's like the understatement of the uh, of the of the universe. Because one day, uh, you know, they forfeit their souls. And Jesus said, what, "What value? You know, what's what's the profit? A man gains the whole world and forfeits his soul. They'll be forfeiting their souls. They'll perish." Jesus said, they're on the broad road to destruction. So, you know, anybody who has anything of this world and, and, and it keeps them from following Christ, one day they're going to regret it. There's going to be this reversal. No matter what they gain, large or small on this earth, they're going to regret it because they're going to forfeit it all one day when they're cast into hell. All right. All right. So uh, I, I love this parable. I love all the significance. And actually, to be perfectly honest with you, there's still one major truth that uh, we've yet to talk about here because many people read this and they scratch their heads. Uh, some people say, well, this shows that in the end, everyone gets the same reward. Everybody gets eternal life who believes in Jesus. Well, is that true? Jesus just told the 12 that they'd be you know, sitting on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes. Is that true for everyone who's ever believed in Christ? Doesn't that, just that in itself right there, disprove the idea that everyone gets the same reward one day when we all die and go to heaven? You know, you get, we get eternal life. No, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. And this parable, although on a surface uh, view, it seems to teach that in the end, everyone who works for God gets the same thing. And even the thief on the cross who gave his life to Jesus in the final moments of his life, uh, you know, will all have the same reward in heaven as him because God is so gracious and he, we're not, uh, it's not about works, it's all about grace. Well, uh, I'm gonna say to you, au contraire, Monsieur, and next time, I'm gonna prove it to you from the Bible. That's not what this parable is teaching, and you are gonna be blessed, and maybe even amazed, okay? All right, thank you so much for joining me. Love you, see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.